Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Wednesday, January 13th. In the, name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away, through my groaning all the day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, my strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely, in the rush of great waters, they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. The Old Testament reading today is from Ezekiel chapter 36. Thus says the Lord God, Because they say to you, You devour people, and you bereave your nation of children. Therefore you shall no longer devour people and no longer bereave your children of your nation, declares the Lord God. And I will not let you hear any more of the reproach of the nations. And you shall no longer bear the disgrace of the peoples and no longer cause your nation to stumble, declares the Lord God. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their own land, they defiled it by their ways and deeds. Their ways before me were like the uncleanness of a woman in her menstrual impurity. So I poured out my wrath upon them for the blood that they had shed in the land, for the idols with which they had defiled it. I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed through the countries. In accordance with their ways and their deeds, I judged them. But when they came to the nations, wherever they came, they profaned my holy name, and that people said of them, These are the people of the Lord, and yet they had to go out of his land. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations to which they came. Therefore I say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. And I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when through you I vindicate my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. And you will have a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and be careful to obey my rules. You shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Our writing this morning is uh, from a book by Robert Cold called Andrea and the Formula of Concord, uh, Six Sermons. And uh, Jacob Andrea is one of our Lutheran uh, founding fathers, so to speak. Uh, he was one of the authors of uh, the Formula of Concord, uh, along with Martin Chemnitz, who we've talked about before. And this is what he says. Here Paul clearly explains the righteousness of faith and what it consists of, that God looks at his Son and for his sake permits us not to suffer for our sins. Instead, he regards us as righteous, as if we were neither sinners nor corrupted by nature. He looks at the power of Christ's resurrection and our sharing of his suffering, for Christ's suffering and death are our death. Excuse me. Excuse me. 
for Christ's suffering and death are our death, and we became like him through faith. We enjoyed the power of his resurrection. Similarly, he writes in Romans 4.25, He was put to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. That means as soon as Christ rose from the dead, the power of his resurrection was so great that whoever believed on him was no longer considered a sinner, but was considered righteous in God's sight. For he had put on the obedience of Christ, which he rendered to the Father even unto death. It is written in Galatians 3.27, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Again, Colossians 2, 12-14. You were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith, which God effects, God who raised him from the dead. And you, who were dead to sin, God made alive with him, having forgiven us all our sins, having canceled the bond which stood against us. From all this, it is plain and clear that when Holy Scripture speaks of the righteousness of faith, and our justification in God's sight. Nothing else can be understood but this. How are we declared utterly free in God's sight of our sins, which we have committed, which still cling to our flesh, which we cannot completely lay aside as long as we live in this world? And two, what God looks upon and why he will not regard us as sinners, and does not cast us away and condemn us eternally as sinful, disobedient children because of the obedience of Christ, which he rendered to his Father even unto, unto death, at the, as the satisfaction and payment for our sins, and as our righteousness. We join together in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And as always, on Wednesdays we pray the litany. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare all the dying, from all sin, from all evil, from the devil's might, from the devil's wiles, from your wrath and from hell's torment, from sudden and evil death. Good Lord, deliver them. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the grace of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, help them, good Lord. In the hour of death, on the day of judgment, help them, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, good Lord. To comfort all the dying, to forgive them all their sins, to lead them out of this misery into eternal life, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, leave us not to bitter death. Lord, have mercy. Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, allow us not to lose hope in the face of death and hell. Lord, have mercy. Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, keep us steadfast in the true faith. Lord, have mercy. 
Amen. O Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith that, relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.